Wait! You may be wondering why the red suit. Well, that's so bad guys can't see me bleed. This guy's got the right idea. He wore the brown pants. Hey there, enthusiasts. Welcome back to Hero Talk. I am your host, Judge Greg. Joining me today, in no particular order, I have Baron Fang, Jeff, Goose, Brian, and the Dark Princess, Jen. Everyone, welcome to Hero Talk. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Thank, thanks for having us. All right. Today's topic is Deadpool. As you all know, Hero Talk is a spoiler podcast. Folks, nothing is off the table. Everything is fair game. You've been warned. Soylent Green is people. I know I've used that one already, but it's a classic. It's true. This is and this is also this is a good time to mention. All right, so for those of you who don't pay very close attention, we do have an explicit language tag. You might not have noticed. We are probably <laughs> at Hero Talk, the cleanest explicit language podcast on the internet. Uh, but we are an explicit language podcast. I generally like to use it as a safety net rather than the rule. Uh, except so today we're doing Deadpool, and as much as I would like to. And as much as I would ask my panel not to resort to profane language and vulgarity and raunchiness, uh, we're doing Deadpool. And I could say that all day long, and it's not going to work. So, for the listening audience at home, if you're thinking to yourself that you're going to bring the whole family in and bring the kids and have little Sally and little <laughs> Jose, I don't know why you named your kid Sally and Jose. That's your business, quite frankly. <laughs> But if you want to bring them in and listen to Uncle Judge Greg tell a fun story about Deadpool, this is this is not the podcast. You need to just maybe go back to Batman or something because this is not going to be for you. So send the kids out of the room, pop in the headphones, don't have this blaring at work. I, I'm really thinking very highly of myself and all these different places that Hero Talk is going to play and not just, you know, the only person I know who listen to Hero Talk at work is me and maybe Nick. I don't know. But, but yeah, like the, the movie had the same had the same warning. Like, don't take your kids to see this, please. Yeah, I mean, it's it was it was a hard R, and I have a feeling that Hero Talk's going to be the same way. So, just letting you know right off the bat. All right, so Deadpool. Uh, I I'm not a huge fan of Deadpool the character, and I find that I can take Deadpool the character in small doses, but not large doses. So it'll come <laughs> as no surprise that I absolutely loved the first. 25 to 30 minutes of this film <laughs> and then <laughs> didn't so much like the rest of it. I mean, there honestly, there just was like, there was a point after 30 minutes in where I just stopped laughing and I stopped reacting and I and spent another 40 minutes just watching the movie. And then I stayed for the stinger at the end, which I never do, but I thought for Deadpool could be anything. It could either be really, really awesomely funny or it could be terrible. And it was terrible. <laughs> So, so that's my Deadpool experience. So understanding, I, I mean, I went to see it specifically because I knew I wanted to record a hero talk on it while everyone else had it fresh in their minds. And knowing that probably everyone else I brought in for Deadpool was going to love the movie, I figured I could be the guy who was a little met on it. And I, I mean, if you listen to hero talk, I'm a little met on most of the popular movies, and I really love the, the fringe movies. That's just who I am. <laughs> So, uh, that's enough for me, because right now, nobody wants to hear me say anything else about Deadpool, because I didn't love it. So, let's start with, uh, Jen, what'd you think of Deadpool? I actually really loved it. Um, much like my recent experiences with Jessica Jones and Daredevil, I went into this having no, you know, prior knowledge of the character, the backstory, really anything about him. Um, obviously from the trailers, I knew it was going to be really raunchy and really hilarious mm -hmm. and it didn't disappoint me at all. I understand how, you know, after a certain period in the movie, you stop laughing because I think really we all did. There were a few little quips, but it was tough. Like the middle of the movie or so, whenever he's, you know, torturing and all that, like I was really uncomfortable and I just wanted it to end. But then once it did, I was back to laughing a lot. So, I mean, I think that they just – they wanted some heavy bits in the middle. They wanted to kind of balance out the humor. But overall, I loved it, and I would absolutely say I'm a Deadpool fan now. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I think it's hard to balance out the humor when – I mean, the, you have at one point Deadpool is going to use his regenerating baby hand to masturbate. <laughs> 
favorite things. I just laughed so hard. You know, so it's, it's very hard for me to get that character and then try to wrap my head around this emotional arc he has about this this love that he left behind. You know, like, mm-hmm. no, but baby hand masturbation is kind of now forever associated with the character. And I'm not going to believe this, this arc that he has. So, I, I don't know. I, I kind of had that issue. So, yeah. uh, Brian, I'm saving you for the end. So, Goose, you're next. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of in the middle with both what you said, Greg, and what you said, Jen. I love the humor of it, but I felt like the the drama bits weren't bad. For example, uh, the the romance between him and Vanessa, I actually did believe mm-hmm. it was believable better than many I've seen in the past, but it just felt like it came out of nowhere compared to all the zaniness of the other points. All the other points. Wow. <laughs> Freudian slip there, Goose. <laughs> a small bit. Just a small bit. I'm not cutting that. That's staying in. You better not cut that. No, that stays. <laughs> that stays. <laughs> All right, uh, Jeff, we'll, we'll go with you for that brilliant, <laughs> brilliant transition. Um, Jeff, what did you think of Deadpool? I, I liked it quite a lot. I, I've actually grown um, pretty tired of uh, Marvel and X-Men adaptations in general. Uh, I burned down on them probably about three or four years ago. Um, and uh, and re- re- honestly, the last adaptation that Marvel did that I was impressed with was Daredevil. I've almost kind of given up on the films at all. Um, but you know, for a, for a character that I, that I'm not super attached to, I, I think they really managed to, to nail the tone, uh, which, which was important, uh, because if you've read the comic and I, I have read enough of them that, that I know quite a bit about the character, not as much as Brian, but you, the, the tone of Deadpool is pretty specific. The fourth wall, the the ridiculous humor, and I, I was just most interested in seeing them actually pull that off. And I think I think they did. I mean, the fact that they went for a hard R was important. Like I think we're all in agreement. If they tried to do this PG thirteen, wouldn't have <laughs> wouldn't have I mean, been. It's, uh, it's doable PG thirteen. Doable, but, doable, but it's, it's harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard, yeah, it is harder. That's what she said. Uh, <laughs> he, he, uh, but the, the proper tone of Deadpool, at least the, the the way that I always you know picture it, it it needs to be an R, and you need you need a lead actor with the comic sensibilities. I think Ryan Reynolds is the perfect character for it, and I like when an actor when a character that's that's halfway between a character and an actor. <laughs> I I like when a I like when an actor is really passionate about a character, and yeah. I, I I've been hearing Ryan Reynolds mentioned in concert with Deadpool for so long that I knew that he was the right choice for it and that he would be able to pull off the tone of it. And, and honestly, for that alone, I, I like it. I, I kind of agree with some of the other points about the romance and stuff. It, it's a bit jarring. That, that said, I think it would have been tiresome if it had been 90 minutes of just um, slap, mm-hmm. slapstick with gunplay. So I can't blame them for incorporating those bits into it. And, and you know, maybe Brian can be uh, the, um, the accurate reference here. But I, I think the comic does incorporate some serious bits in it as well. So it was probably truer to the character to include those bits too rather than just make it a gag a minute. So I was pretty pleasantly surprised. It's my favorite comic adaptation movie in years. All right. Um, so, Brian, I think, I think we've built this up enough. Brian, the, the the hero talk audience is dying to know. <laughs> what did you think of Deadpool? I have been a Deadpool fan since 2007 when I discovered the character in the game Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Yeah, that was actually I, my first discovery of the character as well. <laughs> as soon as I found out about him, you know, I went out trying to find as many of the comics as I could, got as many of the old school comics as I could. I had high hopes for this movie. I was disappointed in what happened to him in uh, Origins. Uh, everyone was disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. When I heard when I heard this movie finally got a green light, like I'd heard like so much of the the behind the scenes production stuff. Like I heard the movie finally got a green light. I I was hyped. Like I had very high expectations for this. I was not disappointed. <laughs> I, I wouldn't think so. Like a lot I, of these I, scenes look like they came right out of a, a Deadpool comic. That's that is the best way I can describe it. This is a Deadpool comic come to life. Yeah. And and and, and Jeff is right. Like all like it's got like yeah, it's got all the jokes. He never takes anything seriously. Wait, I mean, and, and even that's that's an exaggeration. He takes some things very seriously, and when it gets serious, you believe it. You really feel for him. Like he's he's a psychopath. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he is a genuine, 
<laughs> he is a genuine psychopath, even before, you know, he, he had those experiments done on him. Yeah. But he's still a person. So, like, he still has those moments where, like, it, the, the emotional weight of everything just of everything just becomes too much to bear. And, you know, Vanessa's not the only woman he's um, he's longed for. You know, there was uh, Siren from from the X Men. There's been a lot of different women that he's just like, God, I just can't have her for whatever reason, and it just really upsets him. There have been times where he's had something like something as bad has happened to him, and it it just sends him over the deep end. And I thought this this movie just got all of that right. Yeah, I mean, uh, some of the issues with it in tone are because Deadpool comic itself has tone. It's very interesting. Your your first introduction to him was that that Ultimate Alliance game because that was my. Now I I was aware of the character. He's been around since what like ninety one. Yeah. Um, and so like there are yeah. certain things that I I know having never read any Deadpool comics before is I have the constant association that Deadpool and Cable hang out with each other. Yep. <laughs> Which was way before I had ever read my first Deadpool comic. Um, I just kind of knew he was a character. He He's popped up in media all over the place, but um, I, I had no idea he, the, of the whole Merc with a Mouth persona until that game. And he, and you hear like the characters in the game start saying stuff, and he says like "Hello, fighting a guy really stronger than me over here" and stuff like that. And then that's really weird. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I knew nothing about him. Like I just saw him. Like oh, this weird ninja dude with swords. His name's Deadpool. Right, let's give him a try. And then yeah. he started like he levels up and he goes, "Did I win a new car too?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's kind of like where I, I became aware of the character and then as, as I learned more uh, the whole fourth wall breaking thing I, I mean it's cute uh, it, it becomes a little annoying when somebody writes on his Wikipedia page and this may have been taken down I read his Wikipedia a long long time ago they said like the character himself is so hyper aware I'm like okay first of all the character is fictitious everybody <laughs> yeah he, he's not hyper aware he's a comic book character he's written in a way that acknowledges that he's in a comic book so just, yeah. just... I, it, it's just there to add to the humor yeah, you know, I mean, let's, it's, let's it's important take, to have a character that do that. Far. They've had Joker do that yeah. many times. But yeah. yeah, so before the video game, though, the, the only I knew who Deadpool was um, because I knew that he was a very blatant ripoff of Deathstroke from DC Comics. I'm pretty sure that was the that, that was probably the uh, the motivation yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was it's so here's a just one brief example. Deadpool's real name is Wade Wilson. <laughs> yeah. Deathstroke's but... real name is Slade Wilson. Yeah. So, and I, I looked it up. Slate, uh, Deathstroke definitely came first. Oh yeah, it came first by decades. Yeah. Oh yeah, I looked. I looked. There was decades? an interview. I with, thought it was um, in the eighties. I thought he came out in the late seventies with the in that Teen Titans run. It was Teen Titans. I thought it was the early eighties though. Well, now we got to look up Deathstroke. <laughs> Why not? But yeah, but yeah, I saw an interview with um, Rob Liefeld, who um, technically, quote unquote, invented Deadpool, and he literally said, "He said basically, we decided what would happen if you fused Deathstroke and Joker into yeah. a character." Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty close. All right, so 1980. So okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. call us both borderline right on that. Yeah. Uh, famously portrayed by Manu Bennett on Arrow, although they're probably gonna kill him off because DC does not like to cross contaminate their shows. <laughs> That is so. That, that that is a weird policy they've adopted. It's 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 strange. And and you've asked the question. Not, we'll get back to Deadpool, but as long as we're on topic, <laughs> you've asked the question, and it's a good point. So what happens when the Flash movie comes out? Are you going to just kill off the character from your most popular TV show right now? I mean, yeah. the, the Flash has the highest ratings of any other shows. They're not going to kill off the Flash on the TV show for the movie. So okay. then why are they doing it for the kids? It's a multiverse. That yeah. seems to be DC's answer to everything. The multi I mean, that's that's <laughs> the how they're, they're coinciding that Supergirl and the rest of the Arrowverse can exist at the same time. It's just kind of like an Earth-1, Earth-2 situation. They've just decided that they're going to be separate and they're going to have a different label and never the twain shall meet. Yeah, until some there is already an Earth-1 and Earth-2 in Flash. So they, yep. Just oh, like an oh okay. <laughs> that's part of the basis for season two. This whole multiverse thing is confusing. <laughs> this is why I don't read DC. Yeah, no. If, if you don't like multiverse, just don't read DC. They are in love with the multiverse almost as much as Brian's in love with Deadpool. I, Fair enough. I, I thought I could bring it back with that, but that was a horrible transition. I apologize. <laughs> I, I, I thought it worked. When in sure. doubt, you segue, Greg. <laughs> Yeah, not my strong suit on Hero Talk, but I think the listening audience already knows that. So now let's let's actually talk about Deadpool. I suppose we got to talk about the cast. Uh, so starring Ryan Reynolds, this is his second shot at Deadpool, his third shot at being a superhero. Uh, he was in Green Lantern, and so that whole Green Lantern line when they're wheeling him away, like please don't make the suit green and animated. Yeah. 
they show that in so many trailers, it was dead silence in the theater for that joke. It was very I, unnerving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, that, that was yeah, in they pretty much all really the trailers. should have saved that. Yeah, I would because I mean, it just now when they in the opening credits when they threw out the uh, the what's his name? I don't I don't know who it was. Somebody was in a, a Green Lantern costume. That was kind of funny. <laughs> oh yeah, I, th- I, th- I was like, and like um, during that op- during the opening tr- uh, sequence, like it's going slow motion through the car as it's crashing. Some guy's wallet opens up, and there's like a Green Lantern card or something. That yeah, it's like a Green Lantern yeah. collector card that was there, yeah. which is kind of yeah. funny. Um, so, but yeah, <laughs> so Ryan funny. Reynolds. Now he's been so like they tried to get him to play Flash at one point, I believe. Um, I know that. I know yeah. he's he's wanted to play Deadpool. He got he he went to Green Lantern because he felt like the Deadpool movie was making absolutely no progress. So he he needed something to do. Yeah, well, um, I don't think he was the right call for Green Lantern. Quite frankly, no. Um, I, he I, signed I, on without even reading the damn script. Well, to yeah. be honest, if he'd read the script, he wouldn't have signed on. Exactly. <laughs> I, maybe they just weren't giving people scripts. Like, can I get a script? No. No, you <laughs> no, cannot. No, you can't. Well, yeah, um, with um, and then like uh, one thing I heard recently was like with like he's been wanting to play Deadpool for a very long time, you know, and you know as, as soon as he found out he was going to be in uh, Origins, you know, he jumped on that. And they started reading the script and said, OK, look, there's some parts in here that, you know, this isn't Deadpool. You know, people are going to be very angry about this. And they said, either you either you play this character or we'll get someone else who will. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I mean, it, what, the origins was horrible. And I mean, universally yeah. horrible. I think even yeah. like Hugh Jackman even thinks it was pretty bad. Yeah. I think everyone like even like Brian Singer, he, he wrote out X-Men 3 while still acknowledging that it existed. Nobody acknowledges Wolverine ever happened. <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much they, they really don't um yeah so i mean so i like i said he was he was attached to flash very briefly um and i think now he's he's fairly comic book literate because i remember at one point when he was being courted for flash or at least rumored to be being courted for flash he was asked about it and he said like well i'd be interested in the character but and this kind of shows his level of knowledge of the baseline character he said but i really think i'm better for a wally west flash than i would be for a barry allen flash yeah, <laughs> and that was just an off the cuff yeah. comment. So yeah, I mean yeah. that's to, to just to just have that level of of realization between the characters is it shows a, a pretty well literate in terms of comic books. Clearly a comic book nerd. Yeah. Yeah. He's really? he's a perfect choice for this character. You know, you've got to be able to do the action stuff, obviously, but you've also got to be able to have the comedic side down. And I mean. There's not many other comic characters for which that is such a central part to the character. And uh, I mean, I, I literally couldn't think of e- an even I, I, what would the second cho- choice be for this for this role? In um, terms of Bradley actor? Cooper. Yeah, I suppose. Maybe. Um, maybe. Um, I mean, Bradley Cooper is sort of the guy you get when you want somebody who's kind of like Ryan Reynolds, but not exactly <laughs> Ryan Reynolds. So that's why I went there. I can't imagine I, I mean, anyone else but him now. The question is, though, is Ryan Reynolds the B-grade Bradley Cooper, or is Bradley Cooper the B-grade Ryan Reynolds? <laughs> uh, uh, Bradley I'm... Cooper is the Ryan Reynolds that can actually do good dramatic roles. Yeah, R- yeah. Ryan Reynolds is not super great in his dramatic roles. No. I can't not think really, of it. No. This is usually the part where I list what else he's been in, but I'm just presuming everyone knows you know, who Ryan Reynolds is. I can is. tell you he's been in? Uh, he was in the proposal with Sandra Bullock. He was in the remake of uh, Amityville Horror. Oh no, really? Okay, but yeah, he was. That's true. But I think we're, we're skipping over the proposal, <laughs> and I don't think that's the right move. He was he was in the proposal with, with Sandra Bullock. I saw that. I've never seen that. Is it good? It was. It's a romantic comedy. Oh. It I don't was... think Greg liked it. <laughs> Well, I don't really like yeah. rom coms typically, so I'll pass. No, I don't. I'll stick they are, with my they are doesn't like <laughs> rom coms. Blasphemy. No <laughs> problem with rom coms. I have no problem with romantic based movie, but the, the whole premise of every rom com is poor communication. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can't wow. watch one of those movies without just going like, just talk to each other. Just, I, just tell him this was a bet from your best friend. Now. I, 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 <laughs> I, I would love to see a Hero Talk side project where it's just Greg doing rom com reviews and just love every, talk. What, yeah, like <laughs> just, just each successive one, he's more exasperated than the next. Like, why yeah. did I agree to this? Yeah, too bad we already missed Valentine's Day. That would have been the perfect ah uh, yeah special. perfect segue. But I yeah. spent my Valentine's Day watching Deadpool, so here we are. <laughs> maximum what is, effort. What a weird. Does he say maximum effort in the comics? That's a good. Thank you, Goose. Does he say that in the comics? Because he said it like five times this week. I don't, I don't know. No, honestly. it's not like a catchphrase or anything. 
Yeah. I think it was just a running joke in the movie. Yeah. Uh, I have a feeling that Deadpool in the comics is going to start saying maximum effort an awful lot. <laughs> I haven't it's, seen oh, it yeah. yet. I, we got we to go with the rest of the cast. Um, so there's Ajax, played by Ed Screen. I've nev- I'd never heard of never him. Never heard of him. I, I had heard the name Ajax, but if you put a gun to my head, I could not tell you who this character was. I was like, I remember somebody saying the word. I, I looked him up online to see if like it would it would jog my memory, and it did not. I've heard the name Ajax referenced before. I've never actually seen um, Ajax before, so... There we he go. Wasn't even the, he wasn't even their first choice. I think they were trying to get the Taskmaster, and yeah. Fox was telling him too expensive. And I just want to know how? How is he too, too expensive? expensive? You, you, you don't even have an actor attached to him yet. How is he too expensive? No, it's not expensive at all. I mean, like you you could have almost played him exactly like you played Ajax. Yeah. Huh. I mean, the, the yeah, Taskmaster the thing is, is as what? As soon as they he, said Ajax, I immediately thought of the joke Deadpool makes later about the soap. Because I knew nothing yeah. of I knew nothing about the character Ajax, and so my first thought was, "What the soap guy?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I um, look at, again. I recognized the name enough to know that he was a character from the comics, and that was where it ended. Yeah, I, I knew I, I I recognized his name from the comics. I don't remember reading any comics with him. I, I, just, I only have read just, a single comic just, he's ever appeared in. Yeah, yeah. I, I just can't remember like where I where I had heard him referenced. So. Yeah. Um. To their credit, uh, I, I believe he did first appear in a Deadpool comic book. So yeah, yeah. 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 So he is, I think, central to the character. And um, so he's played by Ed Skrein. What else has Ed Skrein been in? Anybody yeah. recognize him from anything? No, he's a I... rapper, apparently. <laughs> oh. What? Moving on. Okay. <laughs> All right. Long as we're here, uh, I got. I want to talk about Angel Dusk. This is played by Gina Carano. Uh, I love Gina Carano. She's probably one of my favorite action stars. Um, even though she's not been in an awful lot, and the movies she's in are usually terrible, not her fault. But I, I like watching her fight. I liked her in, in you know, she was uh, MMA fighting. So it just, it was just kind of fun watching her fight. And even when she's fighting a completely and entirely CGI character, that was actually something that was pretty fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Anyway, so yeah, Gina Carano, you. She She's been in uh, Haywire, was her movie. Uh, she's from the Fast and the Furious series. She was Natasha in Command and Conquer Red Alert 3. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was on American Gladiators, if you guys remember that. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the remake of American <laughs> Gladiators. Anyway, moving on. We are spending way too much time on members of the cast that we, we don't have time to talk about the rest of the movie. So we need to move on. Um, anybody have anything else they want to say about Gina Carano? All right, All right good. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, next we have, uh, who else? So Colossus was in this movie, a uh, random arbitrary choice. It worked. Yeah, it worked. I, I, am a bit, it was a bit odd that he was like in his steel form the entire movie, but <laughs> yeah, that he was entirely CGI the entire time. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. The, like I, I saw some like set, like set videos of the actor who played him. Like there's no way they could have gotten a guy who, like who looked like that version of Colossus, which is why they just had him in the chrome belt the entire time. Yeah, it's it's just weird because you know they've they've had Colossus in these movies before, and not only is it played by somebody completely different, the portrayal of Colossus was completely different. Well, yeah. there is not much of a portrayal of Colossus in there, unless I miss something. Like I think the actual character of Colossus out of X two, X three, and Days of Future Past has like what ten lines. That's true, but I he, I never see him as the kind of like, oh, let me avert my eyes. I'm sorry, that's my Russian accent. <laughs> that was great. That's, that's beautiful. Wow. But you know, it's not like they gave him the opportunity to do that in the first place. It, it, I think my, yeah. my, my point is not that he was a – he was that, that they didn't give him the right personality. They just didn't give him much to have a personality about. Uh, that's that's true. I mean, he basically just played the straight man. And then, uh, so moving on, we cannot stay in Colossus forever. He was uh, partnered with Negasonic Teenage Warhead, who I was hoping against all hope was just made up for this movie nope. and not a real character from the comics. Uh, imagine my disappointment. <laughs> well, here's the thing, that all they took was her name. Pretty much, yeah. And the fact yeah. that she was a teenager, I think, is the like, other she, thing. She, she doesn't have those powers. I think that those powers belong to someone called Cannonball. And, like, Negasonic Teenage Warhead in, in the comics is, like, she's kind of like a telepath. Like, she can predict the future, but that's really it. She doesn't have those powers. Yeah, that's a terrible name. It's a it's a Monster Magnet <laughs> song. <laughs> Apparently yeah, that's where they well, got the name. Yeah, yeah. They, they just, like, some character just called her that one day. It's like, that's what you are. Like, I yeah. loved his All reaction right. to her name, though. That was funny. <laughs> what I, the uh, shit? 
Yep. <laughs> All right, so moving on, moving on. We cannot stay on this cast forever. This was just, There's a lot of movies yeah. still to discuss. Um, T.J. Miller, who played Weasel. Uh, T.J. Miller, I think, has been playing Weasel his entire life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pretty much. Uh, like, get, get him to start inventing Deadpool's tech, and you have the perfect Weasel right there. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's basically it. Like, he's he's <laughs> every role he plays is some variation of Weasel, so... There you go. Also, by I don't know how Deadpool picked his own name in the comic books, but this one was just as strained as in X Men Origins Wolverine. If we're being perfectly honest, they never really came up with it. I don't think it ever really came up with the comic books. It's just like his name is Deadpool. Yeah. I, I I thought it was I thought it was like kind of a funny way of doing it. It's, it's like I think it kind of makes fun of how some heroes will come up with their names. Like it's like like it's kind of like we discussed in the Daredevil um, podcast where it's like they picked it because that's what his name was in the comics so they had to use it yeah and so they i thought it was i i think this actually made more sense than daredevil than daredevils did right daredevils <laughs> makes absolutely no sense at all but we forgive daredevil so we can forgive daredevil we can forgive uh we can forgive this movie and finally um last and certainly not least uh she's just at the very bottom of the imdb page but she's uh portrayed prominently in the movie was uh marina baccarin who played vanessa who was copycat in in the comic books that I learned uh, ten minutes before we started recording this podcast, she's in uh, she's in that Gotham show. Apparently, this actress I didn't realize that she is. She plays Doctor Leslie Tompkins in Gotham. She's also and, in Firefly. Uh, she's known, uh, I think, most famously for her role in Firefly. Uh, let's see, she was in Stargate for a season uh, or two. Was she in Stargate? Yeah. So you remember when uh, Claudia Black's character like had a kid that became like uh, it was um, the enemy was the Ori, and she was like their Jesus. Uh, so I should probably mention, I've only ever seen Stargate Continuum. Uh, yeah, though, this was like the last two seasons of Stargate SG-1. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of lost right now. Yeah. So we're going to back away from the Stargate. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> back away. We are shutting the Stargate. Kurt Russell can just do his thing there. And she, and she was in an episode of one of my favorite shows, How I Met Your Mother. Oh. I think everybody at some point in time was in an episode of How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Uh, she also was the voice of Cheetah in an episode of Batman: Brave and the Bold. Wow. Um, and I believe in uh, in the Son of Batman, she played Talia Al Ghul. Yeah, this is we are and and oh, and she reprised that role in Batman: Bad Blood that just came out uh, a couple weeks ago. This uh, may be a record for us having gotten through a cast without Greg mangling a name yet. I we've we've done I, I'm so wait let let's let's say that I actually have seen or heard I should say Marina Baccarin's name spoken so many times even Blind Al's actress's name is easy to uh, to pronounce yeah what, who played Blind Al her name is Leslie Uggams oh yeah that is easy to pronounce uh, she is straight from the comic book I recognize yeah. that yeah I I don't think I, in the comics though I don't think it was like. A roommate situation, like a, a frustrating. It was. It was situation. almost. It was a very strange, almost prisoner-like he, situation. He kidnapped her. I never read the yeah. comic book. Read the comic where he did, but like he, but she was his prisoner slash housekeeper. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. And it, I think and, I think this worked out a whole lot better than. Oh, it was. It definitely made it funnier. But um, yeah. But it was. It was kind of. Funny, like, or, or no, not the uh, funny is absolutely not not the right word. <laughs> like, there, there was one time I remember where like Blind Al did something. I like she, I think she like went outside or something. And when Deadpool find out, he went ballistic and put her in like home prisoner version of solitary confinement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of hard to keep the yucks going whenever you see, you know, <laughs> yeah. whenever you're kidnapping the poor old lady. <laughs> And it kind of, kind of kills movie. the jovial spirit of the movie once you actually put in well, and, kidnap. And, you know, if they go through, you know, multiple sequels and they use her, you know, like they might do that at some point. But it, 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 they almost never did it. Like it was a very, you know, jokey back and forth relationship. They absolutely got it right in the movies in the movie. Um, but, you know, like, like I've said, Deadpool occasionally gets really serious. He just has these breakdowns every now and then. Yeah, I mean, there's really serious, and then there's kidnapping old blind women. Serious. <laughs> I think I think we might have crossed the line there. <laughs> One more thing before we move on. I just want to put this out there. Uh, least favorite Stanley cameo thus far. <laughs> that, was my, that was my favorite. 
It was, was really, it really funny and unexpected. I thought it was, I thought it was just hilarious. I mean, he's he's the announcer in a shady strip club. And as I say it out loud, I realize, is there a not shady strip club out there? <laughs> as opposed to one yeah. of those, like, family-appropriate... Uh... Yeah, the, the, the high-end family strip clubs. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I realized as soon as I said it, like, that that might have been redundant. I don't think I needed to specifically say that it was a shady strip club. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe there is. Maybe I'm going to get a letter from somebody who said, like, hey, I work at one of the... High end family strip clubs. Bring your kids. I don't. <laughs> maybe maybe they're listening at work to our to our uh, our profanity laden episode of Deadpool. Yeah, we've actually been doing pretty good. Yeah. I think yeah. we've only gotten a handful thus far. So I I take that as a compliment. That yeah, I only have I only have one dialed up. I haven't used it yet. <laughs> well, lovely. All right, so let's let's get to the story. Um. The story is, in terms of what I know about the Deadpool's background, uh, I don't know why I said the Deadpool, but I like that. I'm sticking with it. So what I know about the Deadpool's background, uh, it was pretty spot on. Like, he had all kinds of cancer. Um, and so he went into, I believe in the comic books, it was the, the Weapon X program. Yep. Uh, he, uh, he, he, was... he went through it with uh, with Wolverine. Mm-hmm. Um and just, you know, I, I guess it was like, you know, for a group of mercenaries and to make him – and once they found out he had cancer, they gave him the – you know, the, they they actually kind of got it a little bit right in Origins. They took Wolverine's healing factor and gave it to um, Deadpool. But the thing is it was – it was when they gave it to him, it was unstable, and that's why his cells just like – they just started reproducing and reproducing, and then it turned out the cancer – was actually keeping him alive because if it wasn't for that, he would just get covered in skin and die. Yeah. Um, so that's why he's all scarred is because it's it's the constant. His healing factor is constantly at war with the, almost the cancer's mm. healing factor. Well, not not necessarily, not necessarily the the cancer's healing factor. It's it's keep it, It's more like it's keeping the cancer at bay, and the cancer is keeping his skin from like enveloping him. Mm-hmm. That's lovely, <laughs> I should say. That's um, crazy. No, it's 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 true to the character, and so that's what you basically want. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, so the origin was right there. I mean, even to the point where he was, uh, I believe, dating Vanessa Carlisle, who was copycat from the comics. Um, it, although he never got back with her, I don't think. Uh, after he had this, like he left her, like he did, but like there was no. I, reunion. She went on to become a mercenary herself, and not a uh, not a cocktail waitress at said <laughs> shady strip club. Yeah, I don't I don't think we ever heard from Vanessa again. Like I remember reading she, a comic she, where that she pulled around at uh, X Force a little bit. Hmm. Um, cause she was a shapeshifter, and I, I want to say she infiltrated X Force as Domino. Hmm. That'll be interesting. Another thing, though, was kind of odd. You know, as much as I associate Deadpool with Cable, I also associate Deadpool with Domino. And yep. It's really weird that Domino was not in this. Well, I think it was. It, it may have been like they didn't know how to fit her in. It was. Yeah. It was more like let, let, let's get Deadpool set up, and like that's probably also why they didn't bring in Cable. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, I, well, I mean, Colossus kind of filled the role of Cable for this movie. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Basically, yeah. 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 I, the difference I, I, is Cable is a pacifist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, that's 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 true. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Domino and Cable in the next one. It, it I hope so. Sense. I kind of also hope we get to see Colossus and maybe Negasonic Teenage Warhead, just because they've already established Colossus. I kind of want to see him be silly. Um, <laughs> it is, although I I have to say there there are some pretty satisfying things about having a movie where Deadpool is a character in it, and one is the oddity of Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead being the only two X Men we ever see. Uh, you know, at least Deadpool's going to acknowledge that. You know. It's funny. I see. I see you guys uh, all by yourselves in this huge house. It's almost like the studio couldn't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That I mean, that was that was great. clever. And then also, which was nice because I mean, it's already confusing. You have a different Colossus and he's played differently. When he says, "I'm going to take you to see the professor," and Deadpool even acknowledges, like McElroy or Stewart, because all these timelines have me confused. <laughs> And it's it's so true because I'm thinking like you know what I don't I wouldn't even be able to tell you what professor they were going to take you to see Deadpool. <laughs> I, I don't I don't even know who who's the professor anymore. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure how the timeline is supposed to work anymore because it kind of seems like they've left Stewart's in the dust. I I don't know what they're going to do with it. Yeah, I mean w- when they did the reboot, it's so I mean Age of Apocalypse is going to have to be happening during the 80s or it, something. It is set during the 80s. So then who would be the professor that Colossus would be taking him to see? And how does – I don't I've, – I've heard that there's going to be a spinoff uh, of an X-Force movie that is going to include Deadpool. They, they, I think um, – By heard, I mean read on Wikipedia, so take that for what it's worth. Ryan Reynolds wants an X-Force movie, uh, and, and he wants to be in it. Um, I don't think it's been confirmed yet. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, so I guess we got to move on with the, the plot or whatever it is. Uh, <laughs> before we get too far in, I think we need to go all the way back. How amazing was that opening scene with the credits? Oh, that was hilarious. Good. Pretty darn good. Absolutely I, phenomenal. I was uh, telling Jeff that I don't think I have ever laughed at credits like that since, <laughs> since Dumb and Dumber. The, the but, theater was erupting. Oh Every single time a new name came up, everyone was laughing. Well, name. Name, 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 is, name is, yeah. is, is a generous <laughs> description. <laughs> yeah. A name would be probably more like an accurate description of the portrayal that they had in the movie. Yeah. And he's Which, been, uh, like, uh, written by, and the producer, and the director, like, all of them got really vulgar titles, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> or descriptions, I should say. Yeah, I, so I wanted good. To, to, to look them up before I started the podcast, because I can't remember, like, the producer was, what, some tool or something like that? Or something tool, <laughs> yeah. there were asshats, there were, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was amazing. The writers, the real heroes. I, I, yes. I think, I, I like, uh, a British wanker or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I, the I evil laughing. British guy, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. And the CG, what, a complete CG character or something like a that. A complete CG character, mm-hmm. yeah. So good. <laughs> no, it was I. I appreciated that, and then little things like the uh, the Ryan Reynolds, uh, People Magazine's most beautiful person of the year, and the, and then later on, I believe the Hugh Jackman one made an yep. appearance. Yeah, and his yeah, uh, sure. Hello Kitty duffel bag of weapons. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think uh, they they did a thing uh, not that long ago where um, Ryan Reynolds surprised uh, Hugh Jackman, and like Hugh Jackman thought he was going in for an interview for Eddie the Eagle and yeah. Ryan Reynolds surprised him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be saw the interview. You. I think my favorite, my favorite part was, did you get any notes from the studio to take the Eddie, the Eagle character and sew his mouth shut and give him <laughs> laser beam eyes? <laughs> I, I mean, um, that would have been. And, and of course, Hugh Jackman, who's you know not a slow guy himself, just rolled with it, and it was actually really, really, it was a good interview. But like they, they made mention, like both of them had had got sexiest man of the year um, mm-hmm. yeah. at one point or another. Yeah, and I want to say it was Reynolds had it before Hugh Jackman. I think yeah, I think because so. Reynolds would have had it in his Van Wilder days, and Hugh Jackman would have had it in his Wolverine Actually, I think days. Reynolds got it in 2010, and Jackman got it in 2011. Oh wow, is what I think it was. Oh. Wow, he dethroned the reigning champ. <laughs> I did love his line where he's like, you think Ryan Reynolds got by on acting talent? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got it. Although, I believe at one point in time, like, Deadpool, didn't he almost describe himself as Ryan Reynolds in the comics? He did. I think he, he, he did. Literally, oh, like, in Ryan... the one issue, he literally used the um, thing he used in the movie. It's Ryan Reynolds get bit by a radioactive Sharpay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I thought it was like, um, I, I think in the comics it was uh, Ryan Reynolds crossed with a Sharpay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a scene that I think went on too long was the whole weasel and, and Deadpool discussing how horrifying he looked. That did go on a little long. It was like a like a riff track at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's almost like they were supposed to only use one of those and they instead used all of them. I don't know, they just finally them all just of kept them. going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I I guess we got to talk. There's like two very large major action scenes that kind of got split up by a lot of things. Mm. So the first one is the one that everybody saw in the trailer. And if there's only going to be two huge action sequences, don't screw them up in the trailer. It's I anyway. So the first one is, of course, the one on the highway that we all see where he's, you know, rocking out and then he jumps in the car and he takes the guys out in the car. Uh, Although nice way that that kind of was was the opening sequence. Then we get to see the lead up and then that. Uh, yeah, I like that. The, the bullet thing was kind of funny, though. Yes. Yeah, like, I've only got 12 bullets, so you're all going to have to share. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you got three with one. Yeah, that's well, that's I, well, the best part was when, like, the guy who, who he shot him in the crotch, and so he shoots two bullets at him when he's dead. It's like, stupid, but worth it. He keeps shooting at the he keeps shooting at the guy on the, on the motorcycle. He's like, yeah. bad Deadpool, bad uh-huh. Deadpool, bad Deadpool. Finally gets him. <laughs> Good Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love his commentary, yeah. So, by far, that was my favorite it was, fight. Especially at one point when they, when I think it was Colossus said, like, you know we can hear you, right? <laughs> I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to them. I love that he yeah. ripped his whole body on him. <laughs> I was laughing yeah, he, so hard. He breaks. He breaks hands. like b- both hands and one foot. Yeah. When, he, when he when he punches him and like his hands are just sloshing in his gloves. <laughs> <laughs> very, very much like the Black Knight scene there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, is an and then he just goes, he cuts his hand off, and then it's it's of course flipping off Colossus because <laughs> yeah, that was. Not? 
Right. 327 hours? Well, spoilers. <laughs> That's right. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was, I mean, it was very well done. I, I just wish we hadn't seen so much of that in every trailer for the movie. Yeah. Mm. Um, I still felt like, uh, they also, I still feel like they, they right. left, like, like to me, like some of the best parts in the movie. Um, but yeah, there were there were a few things in the trailers that were repeated ad nauseum, which you know I think is fairly true of pretty much any action movie that comes out these days. Right. There's always that yeah. one that one scene that one line is repeated that's repeated ad nauseum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you there, but. Uh... Anyway, I like I like the scene. Uh, let's see, so we got we had the obligatory. I figure out how to make my own costume scenes. Mm. Which... <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think that that was absolutely ripping on like Batman Begins and uh, Amazing. Yeah, I, I got I got more of a Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. too. Yeah. Well, speaking of, as long as we're talking about Fox, and we weren't, but <laughs> I to keep the transition. It was was it really off putting for anyone else? The first time somebody called someone a mutant, I almost had this moment where I'm like, wait, you can't say that, and I had to stop. And no, wait, yeah, yeah, I, it, it's it, Fox. It, yeah, you can say that. Like I, I, <laughs> I had to bring myself like back down to earth. Like oh oh, but, like, it was really weird to not hear it in a like straight up X Men movie. But it's like remember, but then you remember, yeah, this is part of the X Men movie universe, right? Because it was very odd because I've been so conditioned by by the Marvel movies thus far to not acknowledge mutants that when somebody said mutant i i definitely took a moment to think like what wait you can't say that yeah, it was kind of jarring for just a second like wait a minute then your brain just kind of clicks to like ah screw it yeah it's it, I'm, I'm glad it wasn't just me that like everyone else thought like no you're not allowed to say that but there are there are little tidbits in the movie where if you look carefully enough they're i think uh it's speculated they're kind of subtle hints that fox and marvel have worked out a deal that they're just putting on paper at this point I, I we'd be remiss if we didn't say that there was a helicarrier in the final act. Yeah, I I, I saw oh, yeah. I, I saw the engines and I was like, is is that a what? That's straight up a helicarrier. There's it no is. way around it. It, it. Like, it, it looks different. There's no other non helicarrier thing that's shaped like that. With yeah, that hole. And then there's um the the pizza when the pizza guy comes at. Like in in the early part of the movie, um, if you look at the pizza box, apparently it says Figi Pizza. Figi is Kevin Figi, the current like CEO of Marvel. <laughs> huh. I did not pick I up on that. Yeah, I missed it too. It got pointed out later, and then of course there's yeah. Hydra Bob uh, towards Hydra the Bob end. made it made an appearance. Yes, he did. I didn't see Bob. That was really so still. awesome. <laughs> I man, when he said Bob, like let me tell you, I had all but dismissed the idea that Hydra Bob was going to yeah, be. Yeah, I had you know? too. And then all he says Bob, and I'm like, it's Bob. I was so excited. That was so cool. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, it it brought me back because it was a character who I did not think I was going to see. So hey, maybe I I, I don't. Know. I mean, and listen, we're going to get Spider Man in in Civil War. Yeah. So I mean, we could we could have it happen. Um, I think is there anything else we really need to talk about? Anybody want to mention the CGI dangling Deadpool bits? <laughs> That I was <laughs> Wango a Tango, you know what I mean? I was I, sitting and I didn't want to be I, inappropriate and like nudge Jeff during it, but I, I was like it's such a heavy moment and it's it's so intense and he's so like vulnerable and shanked to the floor. And yeah, that's and then, where my and then eyes it's went. And, there and you're like <laughs> you're like, is that is that genitals? I was like, Oh, oh that's God, just unfortunate. <laughs> Yeah, it's like dangling Deadpool genitals. And you oh, have yeah, to think, yeah. During... Somebody at some point was paid to create those <laughs> for that scene. You're talking about during the fight scene? During the fight when scene. Like when the... yeah, he's like fight. Yeah, I noticed Yeah, that. when he's like hanging there, it's it's hanging. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like they, it, it was they, digital dangling detail. Deadpool genitals. So it was yeah. Rendering ain't easy, no people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And and when you think about it, they kind of had to. They, they couldn't. They couldn't just have it that it was burned off or anything, because later in the movie he makes it clear that he's still, you know, touching himself and stuff. So, <laughs> but well, I think it was a super healing yeah. factor. Although yeah. I have to say. Um, I firmly believe that that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and it's what's on the inside that counts. But if Vanessa gets anywhere near that, she's a saint. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, just imagine the scar tissue. I mean, that can't be comfortable. His face is pretty rough. Yeah. If, uh, I have a comment I'm not going pretty... to make. <laughs> we should probably just walk away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with Jessica Jones, we've hit one of those topics we shouldn't discuss. Right. We we we're we're, we're gonna just back off now. <laughs> um. So now let's we we've, we've kind of talked about the funny parts. Now we got to talk about like this is awful. I didn't like or even believe the relationship between Wade Wilson and Vanessa Carlisle. 
it just it seemed so forced like they meet each other and they play ski ball and then they're just like oh we should i mean he was a a client she was a uh she was a a working girl <laughs> i i don't know a cleaner way to say that <laughs> so hooker on that show <laughs> Yeah, I guess she was a prostitute. Yeah. And he was a client. And, and I'm supposed to believe that she just what, really fell in love with him. I, I guess. I mean, just, I mean, love Voltron, man. I think that was kind of their, like, that, that whole, like, kind of cheesy calendar girl sequence. I think that was kind of their way of showing that they had a lot of time together. And I don't think that they yeah. were, like, madly in love in the beginning, but they had that instant chemistry where they were both, yeah. you know, that, that banter. I, I, I could I could see that, but yeah. that, I mean, that scene was, that was a little uncomfortable. And, in fact, really? I don't ever want to see oh, Ryan you mean this, Reynolds getting that, plowed. Oh, that, yeah, that was. I Happy International Women's Day, everybody. I'm glad that was over as quickly as it was. <laughs> Um, I just love. I, I did. Lo- I did love the look on his face. He was just like, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> You know, and it just, that seems like something you work up to. You don't want to actually start with that. But uh, it, uh and anyway, it's it it was it was very odd. And I mean, I for comedic value, I get it. But it, the whole scene was a little off putting to me. Mm. Um, and then like much. especially the, he proposed with the candy ring when it sounded like she was asking for anal. I don't. It, <laughs> let's not forget so the vampire teeth. <laughs> The vampire teeth, yeah. That, oh my god, man, that's just not cool. That's just, yeah. Just be considerate. That's all I'm saying. All right. You know what? I don't like where this podcast is going. <laughs> Me neither. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna kick this up in reverse, and we're gonna go back. So, final fight scenes. We have Colossus against Angel Dust. See what I'm doing? I'm just gonna take it all the way back to the end again. Yep. <laughs> And we got uh, Francis and and Deadpool. I actually kind of wished Francis Deadpool had been a little bit longer, and I wish not as much had happened with Colossus and Angel Dust and, and it, Negasonic. What's a short it's way? Like the, Neg- the Negasonic. Was, yeah. yeah, yeah. The lead up was a bit too long. It yeah, like the, it, it was. Like, maybe a little less fighting with the goons and a little more fighting with Ajax. Yeah. I did like that he got to spell out his name though. Yes. That yeah. was cool. Oh my God. That, 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 that was the. That was the point for me where I said, yeah, this is a Deadpool comic right here. Mm-hmm. Because that would—that is totally something that would happen in the comics. Yeah. Even the yeah. way that that was framed was like yeah. right out of the comics. It was very well done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, so the movie ends on a satisfying note. I mean, it was, I gotta be honest that one of the nice things about a Deadpool movie is like, I know I'm not going to get a bittersweet ending. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's going to be a pretty sad, I'm at least going to walk away pretty happy with what happened. And, uh, I was, I even, I kind of half giggled when Wade had the, the screwdriver in his head or a knife or whatever it was. And so he was seeing the cartoon animals all <laughs> over the <NASA. laughs> And then he had the uh, the, uh, the Hugh Jackman uh, face stapled on the, his the face. The Hugh Jackman face stapled on his own face. <laughs> you're, you're not going to like yeah. what you find under this under this mask. He pulls it off, or this mask. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Hugh Jack! I was I I almost thought I was gonna see a Hugh Jackman cameo. I kept thinking it was happening, but I think that was one of those too expensive things for fun. Yeah, uh, Hugh Jackman's cool. He would he probably would have done it. Yeah, the, yeah they, they assumed it was going to be expensive, so they just said, "Yeah, don't even talk to him." Well, you yeah. gotta save something for the sequel, right? <laughs> and we're getting Cable in the sequel. That yeah. was what the stinger was: was Deadpool walking out in a bathrobe, yeah. telling me that. And I don't know, he was in somebody's house, right? That wasn't his apartment from the movie. You no, know it, what it was, that was, right? Was that that's, was that Ryan Reynolds' no, that's, house? That's Ferris Bueller's day off. They recreated the scene in the hallway in Ferris Bueller's house at Apparently, the end of the yeah, movie. Yeah, at the end of Ferris Bueller, he like oh, turns man, to the camera good. and goes, "You're Wait, how did you not? How did you not catch that? Because yeah, it has been forever that. since yeah. I've seen it's, Ferris it's been, Bueller's day off. It's been forever since I've seen it. I I caught it immediately as soon as he said, uh, "You're still here." You're still here? <laughs> no, I, over. Only, I only got it when they made the sound effect at the very end. I'll admit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I got to admit, completely didn't went way over my head. Oh, it didn't did figure for that me too. I had to be yeah. told. <laughs> oh, and don't leave your trash in the floor. That's just a dick move. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I mean, I got to be honest. They, people, the the people who work in the theaters, they they cannot stand these Marvel movies when everyone stays to the end. I'm walking out of the theater after this thing's done, and there are like five people that are like employees yeah. Yeah. just waiting hard. for us to get out of there. Yeah. Every time. They're like, "Have a good night, guys." 
I did, I did love in my theater when that scene came up. Two people turned around and went back and got their trash. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I, As well I, they I, should. I made sure to grab my movie. trash. <laughs> yeah. But so any, anyway, uh, yeah, so we find out Cable's going to be in it. They haven't cast him. They might have. I don't know. I don't I don't necessarily trust Stinger Deadpool to give me the absolute honest truth. No, I think the the the, the fan art ones I saw put forward were um, – John Hamm and Liam Neeson, both both of whom looked okay. But if you look up Stephen Lang, he already looks like Cable. He does kind of already yeah. look like he, he'd make a great Cable. Oh yeah, I hope they're talking. Yeah, Stephen about Lang, for people who can't really picture him right off the top of your head, he was uh, the evil Space Marine in Avatar. Yeah, the, the, the guy with the three like scars on his head. Yeah, he's too old though. Well, Cable's, no, Cable's old, but sixty three old. Like really? Well, yeah, he could play forties. I've seen him in person. He looks youth, youthful and full of life and vigor. I mean, he played Stonewall Jackson. I just can't see him playing Cable. I don't. I, w- I would be perfectly okay with him. <laughs> so this movie, as we mentioned before, hard R rating. It is, I think, the highest grossing rated R film of all yeah, time. Yeah, sure. By a lot. Um, it, the, the budget was, and I was surprised by this, the budget was only 58 mil. Wow. I thought it was 85, I mean, but yeah. For I mean, yeah, for a, for a superhero movie, that's... That, that's basically free. Yeah, yeah. I, I do have well, to wonder though, how, how much did you think they spent on the soundtrack? Because the 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 music, which I quite enjoyed, featured quite prominently in certain sections, and they didn't exactly skimp on that. I heard that well, they I mean, took, but samples. they didn't necessarily. They didn't get people who were like. I mean, they didn't get people who were popular now. They mm. got people. Who, no, they got DMX and Salt and Pepper. <laughs> yeah, you know? like, yeah. And wham. <laughs> and wham. <laughs> I said, excuse me, it is wham! Exclamation <laughs> point. Yes, it is. Yes. yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, anyway, what is it gross? Yeah, I'm looking this up right now. It, it's so already it grossed, grossed over 200 million worldwide. Wow. Actually, it's already grossed over 500 million Holy by the most crap. recent wow. wow. So it's basically just making all the money. All yeah. the money. Yep. All the money. I, in fact, I've heard, and this is just rumor um, based on my Twitter feed, so take this for what it's worth. But because of the success of this, Fox is letting the next Wolverine movie be rated R. Oh, yeah. No, it's. Oh. This could be a nice new trend. It seems yeah. like movie studios have turned into Oprah after Deadpool came out. You get rated R, and you get rated R. Everybody's <laughs> yeah. rated R. Well, I mean, rated R used to be the kiss of death for movies, yeah. you know, especially for a movie like a comic book or a hero or action movie. Like, it was just, you, you could get the horror audience, and you could get, like, maybe more hardcore action, but PG-13, that was the sweet spot. It was edgy enough so that, you know, you could actually keep the, the entire audience engaged, but it was clean enough so that, you know, maybe the kids who shouldn't have been there, but were there mm. wasn't too bad yeah but uh i mean this i don't know i don't know if you could make the movie the right way the deadpool you Security. absolutely could not and like they they, yeah. they were fighting with the studio because like we really it needs to be an r rating and and the studio was like but but then we lose out on the teenagers i don't know no yeah it doesn't look like they lost out on much of anybody like yeah. I, so like yeah. you know when the footage finally released you know Five, like Fox o- knew, okay, we need to greenlight this thing when they saw the reaction, and I think they understood that people were going to go see it even if it was rated R, yeah. with people saying, it, it has to be rated R or it's not going to be good enough. I, I hate to get all feel the dreams, but if you get, <laughs> if you build it, they will come. Like If you, yeah. if you, get, the to- if you get the tone right that fits the character that the fans associate with the, the character, then you're going to get people in the seats, and the, uh, rating isn't going to stand in the way of that. Well, it's like, you know, Fox has hopefully finally learned the lesson that Warner Brothers still refuses to learn. It's not about, you know, doing what everyone else is doing. It's not about doing what's popular these days. It's about doing what's right for the source material. You get someone in who's passionate about yep. that source material and get them to do it right, and you will have a very successful movie. So do you think we'll get to see some uh, some yellow spandex in the next Wolverine movie? <laughs> I'm just hoping to get to see some color of any kind in an X-Men <laughs> universe. I mean, for some reason, I swear these movies, it's like it's monochromatic at this point. Yeah, it's like it's all like black leather. Yeah, I I just I'm saying I think we're ready. I think as an audience, we are ready for for the yellow. One thing so, I do hope th- that studios take from this is that it wasn't the fact that it was R-rated that made Deadpool so popular. It was the fact that they stuck to the source material. You can make a PG-13 movie that will make just as much, if not more, money than this, bringing in the same crowd. It's not just about the gore or the violence or the nudity or any of this. 
It's about adherence. That's what's important. Yes, exactly. Now, yeah. what, what I've heard about the Wolverine movie coming out is it's it, it's R rated. Or it's it's supposedly going to be R rated because it's um it's Old Man Logan. So okay. so we probably won't see the yellow, ah. but we will probably see a very violent Wolverine. I want to see yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Matt and the Sun on YouTube have proven you can do Wolverine's outfit and make it badass. A Bat and the Sun have done some some awesome things. Uh, oh yes, they, they they were the first ones to get the portrayal of Deadpool right. I need, I need to look that up. And the portrayal of of Wolverine right. And the uh, the Batman Wolverine rematch was probably one of my favorite skits they ever did. <laughs> and they actually get the real White Ranger and Green Ranger to do his scenes, and that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty cool. All right, so Bat in the Sun. You can go check them out on, on YouTube. Um, Anybody have anything left that they want to say about Deadpool before we talk about our favorite parts? I'm good. Nope. I don't think so. All right, good. All right, Brian, I'm saving you for the end. <laughs> Best for last. Uh, yeah, so Jeff, I'm going to start with you. What's your favorite part of Deadpool? Um, I mean, the uh, the overpass fight scene in general, but uh, honestly, yeah. I, honestly I, I don't know what it was, but just the bits with the, in the taxi with the taxi driver and stuff really, really oh, got Those me. are some funny parts, especially when like when he has his, his buddy yeah, in the trunk. I, <laughs> he's like, I did not say that. That's wrong. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> just yeah. the fact that... Oh, and, and, and let's remember what happened to, uh, to uh, Duke Bender. He got into <laughs> To an accident. Um, Deadpool left his duffel bag full of assault weapons in <laughs> in the car, and he's got his like cousin or whatever in the trunk. Poor, and then the, he gets hit Duke in the trunk by another car. That guy's dead. He, yeah, or at least in pain. So I think we heard him screaming. So I don't yeah. think he's dead, but he's a uh, so he's certainly in a bad way. Depender and, is, is uh, again. I want to point out a Hello Kitty duffel bag. So Depender is going to prison. Yes. Yeah, there, I don't see how he's not going to go to prison. But I hope he's in the sequel. You know, ironically, the quote-unquote official Deadpool Twitter account only follows Hello Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that seems about right. All right, anyway, uh, Jen, what was your favorite part of Deadpool? Uh, my favorite part was probably the whole first fight sequence, everything on the freeway. Um, I, I, mean, I can't even pick like one specific part. Everything from him counting the bullets to breaking his whole body. Well, they also broke it up very well. Like It could have been very and drawn out, but they broke it up with the with the flashback. Flashback, yeah, there was a little... The, the flashback. flashbacks helped quite a bit. All right, all right, got, we got we got to keep going, people. We You know how much I'm going to have to edit this down? All right. Goose, what was your favorite part of Deadpool? My favorite part was actually the part where he's going to the different outfits looking for Francis. My favorite part in particular, the part that made me just absolutely spit laughing, is when he's like, you're going to get killed by a Zamboni in like five minutes. <laughs> He was. He was chasing him with a Van Zamboni. Was that was that was so away. damn funny to me. That was, that was pretty funny. All right, um, Brian, uh, you're up. What was your favorite part of Deadpool? My favorite part was where Ajax looked over the side of the helicarrier, and Deadpool has spelled out his, uh, it spelled out his name with the bodies, like like even to the part like the eye, like he had cut off the head and made it the dot, and the rest of the body was like I don't know if you noticed was mooning him. <laughs> I did notice. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, yeah. That 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 was my absolute favorite part. So I guess so. My favorite part. This this was actually pretty easy. My favorite part was the opening credits. I mean, it was that yeah. was the high. <laughs> I I didn't stop laughing the entire time. So it's not a dig on the rest of the movie. I'm just saying, like that was I I loved that. I wish they should just do that for all movies from now on. I, I'd like to give a, a kind of an honorable mention to the like the um the the montage where he's looking for Ajax and. Um, he's, uh, well, 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 first he's, he's going after those two women. He's like, I, I don't understand. Like, is it sexist if I hit you? Is it sexist if I don't? I just don't know what to do here. <laughs> and then I don't, I don't know when they planned out this line, but it was, it was so like just relevant at the time. Like, like, you know, he's been calling like the recruiter, like a pedophile the whole movie and then when he when he when he tracks him down he's like hey jared i'd like a sub with blah 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 oh, yeah I yeah i i remember when he said that i'm like oh that's uncomfortable <laughs> yeah all right all right everyone we hit we need to move on now is the time on here we talk we give this movie a score and i would like to remind everybody review scores are dumb and they don't matter that being said uh goose we'll start with you what would you give deadpool I give Deadpool. Hey Francis, we gonna f or what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I knew there was, I warned you there was one. <laughs> yeah, I should have known not to even ask you. <laughs> it's, it's, I blame myself, honestly. Uh, All right, Jen, Jen, we're moving on quickly. What would you give Deadpool? I don't know if you're going to like mine anymore. Um, I'm giving it two testicles with teeth. <laughs> two <laughs> testicles with teeth. I, uh, all right, you know what? Moving on. It don't matter. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. <laughs> I'm giving it uh, four Golden Girls out of five, and given that there only were four Golden Girls, I don't know how much sense that makes, but I still need to do a four to five rating. So I like it. Okay, awesome, Brian. I'm I'm losing it here. Just what was your score? I give it a thumbs up as I am cutting my hand off. <laughs> All right, and I'm just gonna go ahead and give Deadpool uh, one set of dangling Deadpool bits. <laughs> Take from that what you will. <laughs> Review scores don't matter. All right, everyone, thank you for being on the Deadpool Hero Talk. Thanks for You're having welcome. us. Thank you. Thanks for having thank me. Thank you. This was a uh, this was a trial. I will give the, I will give it that. I uh, <laughs> I everyone loved the movie. So when I didn't, I got a little bit like, oh no, do I really want to do this? Uh, yet here we are. So. Thanks, everybody. It was a good time. Thank you. All right. If you have a movie that you would like to hear me review on Hero Talk, you just simply have to send an email to Hero Talk at Enthusiacs.com. For any more content, let's plays, of videos, reviews, podcasts, head over to Enthusiacs.com. You can look us up on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Just check for Enthusiacs. And as always, I will see you right back here for the next Hero Talk. <laughs>